Hey everyone, welcome back to A Little Bit of Lent, where we take a little bit of time to let uh, the, the Lenten season, the messages that come from, from these awesome Lenten hymns, just sink into our lives, just meditating on their message and marinate in what God is calling us to see as we look back at these hymns and the, the scripture passages that help to create them. And today we have a cool one. And in the Lutheran service book, it's number 609. It is Jesus Sinners Doth Receive. And uh, th this is another hymn that I just love. You know, I love the tune, I love the words, um, because the words especially promote this idea that I think we all struggle with in culture. This idea of, of, of superiority and, uh, and looking down on others. Uh, and actually one of the first verses that this, or first couple verses that this hymn uh, is based on is Luke chapter 15, verses two to four. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them, he being Jesus, this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And Jesus' point there is he came for everyone. No one is unworthy of the grace that he brings. Jesus didn't come to, to ignore that group of people. He came for all. But then we got to deal with this whole idea of, well, if Jesus came, that means he came to give something, which means I need something. And then you get into this idea of, I have to not only be able to, to look around at others and see that Jesus came for them, but also accept that Jesus came for me. And that's another human nature issue that we have. It's a struggle that we have to be able to accept the fact that something might be wrong with me. I need help. Because as you look around at the world around us, you know, how many people act like they've, they've got it all figured out? You know, how many people do you talk to, um, whether it's about faith or something else, and somehow the conversation comes up, you know, are you a good person? And people love to say, oh, yeah, I'm a good person. You know, I'm not like so-and-so. I'm not um, this evil person. I, I, I think I do more good than bad. I, I got good karma coming my way or whatever sort of thing we're, we're choosing to make up today. Like, it, it gets into this idea of I don't want to have to admit I need help. And yet, Jesus is pretty clear about that. He didn't come for the healthy. He came for the sick. In the same gospel as what we just read from, um, but in, verse five, or in chapter 5, it says, And Jesus answered them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus didn't come for, for the people who think they've got their lives figured out, who think they've got everything put together, who think they've figured out how to live in this world in a perfect way, because none of us can't. And so it's not that Jesus is ignoring them. It's that Jesus is, is saying, I'm not going to force what I have to offer on you. But understand, you need what I have. And so he offers it freely to everyone. And he, he wants you to come to him. And the only way we can is by accepting that we're broken. Accepting that we're in need of assistance. That we're in need of help. And that's what this hymn is all about. I love this hymn because I love the story that it tells. It's, it it, it kind of plays off of human nature a little bit. And as we look at these verses, you're going to see exactly what I mean. Because in verse 1, okay, the, 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 the writer of this text, I, whether he was intending it or not, verse 1 is like this objective, abstract truth that Jesus came for all. Take a look. Jesus sinners doth receive... Oh, may all this saying ponder, who in sin's delusions live and from God in heaven wander. Here is hope for all who grieve. Jesus sinners doth receive. You see, nowhere in that verse is there first person language at all. It's all uh, about all, you know, Jesus came for everyone. Jesus came for the whole world. And you know, that's safe. That's a safe feeling to have because, you know, if Jesus came for everyone, well, cool. Well, that includes me. I don't have to admit that I, I have a problem. I don't have to struggle with anything. I can just be a part of the, the all-inclusive group that is everyone. 
But Jesus wants more than that. He wants a personal relationship. He doesn't want this, hey, you know, I came to save the world and you're a part of it, super cool. No, he wants to know you. And I think the hymn writer knows that because in the next verse, he, he gets a little more personal. Take a look. We, there's that first person, we deserve but grief and shame. Yet his words rich, rich grace revealing Pardon, peace, and life proclaim. Here our ills have perfect healing. Firmly in these words believe, Jesus sinners doth receive. You see, he's saying again, Jesus receives sinners. And we are a part of it. All right, we, that's a little more personal. That's a little bit more about me. But then in verse 3, it's like the writer gets scared again because he's like, oh, it's we. That means me. Yes, I am the sinner he's receiving. Oh, wait, I just called myself a sinner. Okay, I'm going to back off again. We're going to go abstract. We're going to go all inclusive. We're going to go objective here. And in verse 3, instead of referring to himself, he's talking about this idea that, that maybe he hopes he gets to be a part of. Take a look. Sheep that from the fold did stray, no true shepherd e'er forsaketh. Weary souls that lost their way, Christ the shepherd gently taketh in his arms that they may live, Jesus sinners doth receive. And so again, we're going back to this idea of of Jesus is the shepherd of the world. We are all his sheep. But the hymn writer doesn't use that first person language. And again, I feel like that just, that plays off our human emotions. You know, we, we get to a point where it's like, okay, I think I can accept that I need help. I think I can accept that I am broken. But then we back off again because we're like, I don't know. You know, someone judges us. Someone makes us feel inferior. Someone makes us feel like, no, I don't need help. I can handle this myself. But we still want that shepherd to come in and protect us and to save us and to take care of us and to provide for us because we see that we can't handle it. We see that we're not good enough. We recognize, I need help. And that's where the hymn writer then takes the next four verses. All right, and you're not going to hear the last three. Uh, We only sang the first four as we were getting ready for this. But every one of the next four verses in this hymn, if you look it up, it's all first person singular language. It's all about me. It's all about I. It's all about my. It's all about the stuff that I have done wrong, and yet Jesus loves me. And so how I want to finish this off right here before before we hear this hymn, before we just get an opportunity to again worship our God for the incredible gift of grace that he has given to us, I want to just share with you where all of us end up inevitably. We're all of us who are called into the faith, who are called by God to follow him end up. It's in recognizing our sinfulness. Take a look at verse four. I, a sinner, come to thee with a penitent confession. Save your mercy show to me. Grant for all my sins remission. Let these words my soul relieve. Jesus sinners doth receive. We come before Jesus because we finally recognize in ourselves, I'm a mess. I'm broken. I'm a sinner. I can't live up to the standard that God has given to me. And yet, in that moment, the words don't change. You can read it in scripture. It doesn't change. Jesus doesn't say, oh wait, you you sin? You're, You're broken? You're... You're not living perfectly? Well, I didn't come for the broken. I came for the perfect. No, Jesus says, I didn't come for the perfect. I came for the broken. You're finally recognizing you're broken? I am here for you. And so we come before our God, humbly seeking his forgiveness. And the next three verses, they talk about that forgiveness. How our transgressions were were, were like scarlet, but we are made to be white as snow. How we've received his forgiveness and how Christ has purchased us from the clutches of hell. And he didn't do it because you're a good person. He didn't do it because you had life figured out. He did it because he loves you. He did it because he recognized that you couldn't handle what God the Father was calling us to do. He did it for us so that we wouldn't have to. 
Jesus doesn't say, live up to this standard and then come follow me. No, he says, come follow me and let me show you, you can't live up to the standard. But I did. And I did it for you. Because I love you. So no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what you will become, Jesus came for you. Because you and I and everyone else were sinners. And Jesus, Jesus receives sinners. He takes them all. He loves them all. He forgives them of their sin, and he claims them as his own. I hope as you journey further into the season of Lent, I hope that this week you get an opportunity to lift up in prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving to God, thanking him that he, he took care of everything. That he came to this world in order to receive you, a sinner, in order to receive me, a sinner. And that you just spend some time with him, remembering why he had to go to the cross and celebrating with him that although he died, he rose again. And that on the last day, he will receive you. He will receive me because of the faith we have in him. This has been a little bit of Lent. Enjoy the hymn. Sing along with us if you know it, and we'll see you guys next week.